Hi there. Today we're going to modify a digital brake lever intended for bike applications into a proportional brake lever that will give proportional torque control. So here we see two brake levers intended for an e-bike application. One on the left is a cheap e-bike brake lever, one on the right is a good e-bike brake lever. So the good one is all metal construction with an external hull sensor that's easy to replace and the internal magnet on the little lever. Very solid construction. The one on the left, the cheap e-bike control or e-bike lever is really badly made, but it is easy to modify since the uh, housing's all plastic and uh, the lever is uh, relatively simple to to modify. As you can see the hull sets are caked with uh, hot glue on the inside. So this hull sensor is a digital hull sensor. And now we're going to disassemble this one since it's easier the two to modify. And uh, it's only held together with a couple of uh, pieces. There's a hex screw that needs to be removed to get the lever off and the spring and the, and the bushings. So I'm just going to zip through this quickly. the various pieces off. Just remember to note the orientation of the return spring since it only goes on one way. So you can see here the little magnet that's used for tripping the digital hull sensor inside the housing. We're going to remove that later. And you can see inside the housing that the, the hull sensor, the digital, digital hull sensor is just caked with hot glue that needs to be cut out before you can get it out. Not an easy task, lots of prying. Just be careful when you're doing this not to stab yourself or cut yourself with an exacto knife. So now we've got this sensor released from the hot glue. See, it's a standard hull sensor package, and we're going to cut that off and replace it with a racial metric hull sensor. Now, a racial metric hull sensor is one that will give you a proportional DC output about a mid level voltage point. So, if it's a 5 volt device, it will put out with no magnetic field. 2.5 volts. You can see the housing where the wire goes through and inside you can see the housing where the magnetic sensor will be put. Okay, so here we have our racial metric hull sensor and we're going to prepare the wires and get that all soldered up. Now the Chinese have a specific coloring code for the most part for their hall sensors. I'm not really going to follow it. And by the way, you will need a compass to determine polarities of the magnets. That's an important piece of uh, equipment to have on hand. Okay, so now we've got our hull sensor now soldered nicely onto the wires and we're just going to place a little bit of heat shrink tubing over top. extract the rest of the harness out so that we can uh, power up the sensor. So 
So this is a uh, kind of serves two purposes. One is just to verify that we actually did a proper solder job on the uh, hull sensor, and two to check the sensing element as to what side of the package we have a sensing element for the polarity that we want. So as we approach the sensor, we notice that the voltage actually starts to decrease. And flipping it to the other side, you can see that the voltage is increasing on the sensor. So this isn't a digital, it's a racial metric device. So we're just going to mark the one side. side that was increasing. going to check what the polarity of the magnet was that we tested the hall sensor with and just make a note of, of the, uh, the polarity on the lever for later. So I picked up these neodymium magnets from a hobby shop, they're a little tiny puck, and I drilled a small hole at the end of the lever and inserted the uh, puck into it. So I'm just here removing it so that I can actually secure it a little bit better with a bit of uh, quick drying glue. So when this lever is inserted in the housing, it will move the magnet towards the bottom of the sensor. Now to get a little bit higher uh, resolution on the sensor, we'll install another magnet that will come towards the top of the sensor as the lever is uh, released. Now as a note, I would suggest do not use metal tweezers to glue a magnet onto another piece of metal. Okay, so now we're just going to start to fit the hull sensor back into the housing. setting glue again to just secure it temporarily while we fit the rest of the components. So now that's sitting kind of nicely in place and should move around while we fit everything else. So I'm just going to insert the lever in now and just do a test that there's no interference with the magnet that we placed on the end of the lever. And we'll just hook up stuff just to see that we've got the right polarity as well. So 
So I want it so that when the lever is pulled that the voltage increases on the output. Which it's doing, which so I have the correct polarity. Since these magnets aren't really large, they are strong, but they're not really large. They don't really have a lot of magnetic flux that will cross that sensor. So the range is not going to be the full range of what the sensor could pick up. And I've just tacked on another magnet onto a little holder that will go onto the lever on the other side of the magnetic sensor. Just verifying that it's actually going to fit correctly. So where the magnet was originally for the digital sensor on the lever, they had a small pocket which I drilled through to allow us, me to put a small piece of uh, nylon peg in there to hold that little holder for the second magnet. I'm just checking to make sure that it actually fits correctly and that we get the right angle on the holder. glue hasn't quite cured yet for just uh, tacking that in so it's still a little sticky. So the next part is that we want to get everything locked down since we've test fitted it. So I use a two-part uh, five-minute epoxy that has a reasonable working time. Just how fast this will cure just by how much of the, the mixture you balance. So we're just going to mix this up quickly and spread a lot of it around the hull sensor to seal up any edges that might be still exposed and to securely give a good bond to the, the plastic housing. We also are going to uh, put a piece on the uh, little pocket magnet on the lever and then seal up the uh, piece on the secondary magnet as well. So now everything's all cured up. We'll just finish test fitting the, uh, the lever. And making sure that Again, the angles are correct to, to clear all pieces within the housing. And just to double check that uh, we still have reasonable sensitivity. Everything looks okay. So the last part is to lock the secondary magnet in place. So we're just going to hold it with a little bit of instant glue temporarily so we know it won't move and then mix up some more two-part epoxy. So this is kind of the last step to actually put everything together. So once this is cured up, we're pretty much good to go to finish the assembly. Now you have 
have to be careful not to get any of the epoxy into any place that might interfere with the actual housing. So once you've got everything sort of coated and you know that you have enough in the right places to keep that secondary magnet from moving, you can let it set up a little bit and then start working it with with uh, you know an exacto knife or something, some other sharp piece of metal that uh, can help you uh, remove material and mold it. Again, if you're using an X-Acto knife, just be careful not to slip and cut yourself. So the whole time period to actually do this work is probably about an hour and a half of time for those who are wanting to do it. So everything's all cured up now and it's time to assemble. So it's really important to remember which side that spring had come off. So fitting the bushings and then your spring. sort of work it in and then make sure that the, the spring if you pull the little edge on it clips over the uh, plastic retainer and then you can line up your hole for your bolt and screw it all back together so now we've got it together it's time to uh, do some testing So the hope is that we have about a fold of range after reassembling it and aligning the magnets. So it looks like we've got about 0.7 volt range. It's not spectacular, but with some scaling, proper resolution on your ADC, and uh, some nice brake mapping, this can provide a reasonably clean uh, response for, for torque when you're regening. So once again, this is not a compatible brake lever for a Chinese controller. This is intended for designing your own controller and incorporating regen braking that's proportional. Okay, all done. So again, thank you very much for watching the video and if you have any questions, please leave comments below and give a thumbs up if you like it. See ya.